So good morning and welcome to Lockdown 3 Experience Recovery Conversations. Today I'm joined by Marco Humphrey and uh, Marco works in Magnavita up in uh, Lindsay, North Lindsay. So um, Marco, just before we start, give us a, an idea. Who, you, who, who are you? What do you do? Okay, so I'm Marco, as you were just mentioning there. I'm based in East Lindsay in Louth. I work for Magnavitae and I'm part of the community health team, which involves uh, myself and my colleagues supporting people in many different ways um, around the whole area of East Lindsay, which could be um, getting them moving more, eating better, starting them, um, preventing isolation, um, those kind of things really. Okay, so before lockdown, and I, and I know it's difficult to remember before lockdown, does East Lindsay have particular challenges around its population? Because I know it, it's quite a rural population area, isn't it? Yes, it is quite a diverse population, but there are definitely areas of deprivation, particularly right. around sort of the Mablethorpe, the coastal areas, Skegness, mm -hmm. etc. Um, maybe as you come in more inland, it is a bit different, that's true, but there does seem to be more problems with seasonal work, yeah. unemployment, um, more unhealthy diets, for example. Yeah, we see quite a lot of that. Okay, so the, the challenges of geography and demographic exacerbate some of the activity that you've been engaged in prior to lockdown. That's right, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, with that in mind, we've tried to tailor the things we've delivered with that in mind. So some of our sessions, for example, with the Fitness Food and Friends, we've tried to bring in people from all different areas like mental health, um, getting people online, being preventing digital poverty, um, as well as eating better on a low budget and simple exercise techniques, all things to just help, you know, get people feeling better, thinking better and uh, just more better about themselves really yeah absolutely so that holistic approach to people's well-being it, it's it's been yeah. interesting and i guess you know you you talked about di digital poverty there you must have made quite a big difference to a lot of people had you not have done that prior to lockdown there would be people in very different position i would guess that's true i mean prior to lockdown what i've noticed is people were seeing being online yes as important but a lot of people who maybe had never gone down that road thought I don't really need to bother. I can just come to my groups, do my own thing. There's no need for it. But obviously during the lockdown, particularly now I've noticed a lot of people who've said to me through lockdown, I don't need to bother with that. They're starting to come around now to the realization I do need to, because yeah. I'm, it's, it's such a big problem to me. I never saw this before. Mm, so that's a big change. Yeah. So give us a bit more detail then. So what would a normal day involve post-lockdown? What were you up to? Okay, so post-lockdown, um, when it initially happened, you've got to realise as well, we went from being really busy, myself and my colleagues, Erica and Lizzie, we were going around East Lindsay doing, we, were, we weren't out every day, but we were doing a lot of stuff. Mm. And all of a sudden, you're at home. You're like That's a right. caged lion, if you like. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> and... Then you, your mind goes to your groups. So well, what are we going to do? Because mm. a lot of the stuff is meeting up, socialization, having a cup of tea and a chat. Mm. And now it's like, oh, a lot of these people aren't online. Um, a lot of these people have quite a lot of health needs. They may have memory problems. Mm. They may be struggling with other mental health conditions. So we started doing a, um, a format for our Magna Vitae community Facebook. Yeah. So, for example, the Wellbeing Wednesday, mm -hmm. some simple exercise, a Tasty Tuesday, a recipe and me doing some cooking. But obviously, we weren't touching the people who weren't those that couldn't get online. Mm -hmm. So our Wellbeing telephone calls to a lot of people became incredibly important. Okay. We were kind of getting really familiar with them in terms of, you know, I know what's going on in your life week to week mm -hmm. and trying to signpost them. Um, support them um, just guide them through it where we can and, and the power of a simple conversation yeah. has really struck me how mm. I really and the feedback we've been getting um, lately as well about oh thank you for these phone calls I don't know what I would have done without them it's quite amazing really yeah it is and you know it's it's one of my very selfish reasons for doing what I'm doing with you now 
is uh, I really miss that conversation with people and learning from people and sharing their best practice. So absolutely, it was one of the reasons I did all of this, you know, in lockdown one and two. So I can, I can, I suppose I get some understanding of how people are feeling about that. But what 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 intrigues me is is that you 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 went from a very getting together, very social type of activity, and actually probably one of the the core themes of what you did to a very much that online and telephone call, but you found the telephone calls have really worked. I, I think that's really interesting. Yeah. I think you've got to understand as well, there were, we have a number of different projects. The mm. Still Me project was for people with life limiting conditions. Right. And as you can imagine, that was a lot of say dementia, memory problems, Parkinson's, that kind of thing. So by the very nature, that people group are less likely to be online. Mm. Very few of them were. So a lot of that obviously was much more about well-being calls is there anything we can fetch from the shops for you and bring things to you or etc mm. the, the next group fitness food and friends was kind of a mixture some people who were quite savvy they were already online could do the emails could do zoom some of them could not and the last group was chaps so by the nature this was just men okay and the chaps group we, we had was primarily centered around um, sporting memories all right We've got a little group in Skegness. We were just about poised to start one in Mablethorpe the very week before the lockdown, right. so it didn't happen. And then it was about transferring those men and gaining new ones as well and to engage via phone calls or, or Zoom. Now, to begin with, I found that the majority did not do Zoom. Mm. They may have a, a smartphone, but they were just texting and calling, like nothing else. Mm. So it took quite some time um, to get some of them set up so they right. could use Zoom. Right. Um, using partners like Links Digital who produce great used user guides to Zoom yeah. or even projects that Links Digital had and now we have of getting them computer tablets. All right. Free of charge, set up, ready to go so they can start to learn how to, to get onto Zoom as well. Yeah. So it's been okay. quite a gradual process to change right. from a phone to zoom for some people excellent and, and i guess what you're, you're you're alluding to there is something that i've heard from others is actually this 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 process of 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 reframing what we do has also introduced us to new organizations and other organizations who now know us and we know them that can support so people like you said the links it people the people that have been helping with tablets that might not have been a relationship that you would have ever had had we not gone through this process yeah i think in some ways, we, we might have had the relationship to a certain degree, mm -hmm. but it's definitely deeper now because right. we've had to support one another or signpost to one another. And also schemes like uh, the Good Neighbour Scheme that have right. popped up in different towns and, mm -hmm. and villages where we've worked alongside them or they've contacted us. Can you do anything for Albert? He's really struggling at the moment. We're not sure what to do. Mm -hmm. That's been... And then what we did do early on in lockdown, Magnavitae produced sort of a digital platform on the website, which was a hugely comprehensive guide to pretty much everything you would need to know about, whether it was what shops can deliver to me, okay. how can I get my prescription delivered, pretty much everything really. So that That's was fantastic. Really good, that was That's really, really good. good. And I, and the whole reason for this conversation, Marco, is, is yes, to share the good practice and let people know. But what I'm really interested in is, is what you've learned from lockdown and, and how that will change what you do in the future, how you will be better as a result of what you've learned. Yeah. OK, so first of all, I, th I think the first thing I've realised is the power of the, the simple conversation. Mm. Which, not that I didn't before, but I think I've learned that even more to a deeper degree just having that relationship and just encouraging people and realizing everybody's wired to want to have encouragement support they need a purpose everyone mm -hmm. you know, to have that identity there's one thing i've noticed particularly with the men's group because a lot of them are into football right the whole identity thing so i've learned you know groups getting people together in groups of similar uh, likes and dislikes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, one example from this morning, I just rang up one of them, the participants, and she was saying her husband, who's been in the sporting memories, um, he opened the present that we'd got for him in the Christmas hamper, and he went, oh, it's amazing, it's an Aston Villa book. 
right. because he knew he was an Aston Villa fan. It's yeah. part of his identity. He opens it up. She said, oh, he reads a little bit every day. He couldn't believe that how busy you lot are. You thought to get him a book on his team right. that he's opened up and read. It makes him feel really special. Mm. And I thought, wow, yeah. that, that's quite an amazing bit of feedback. So that is definitely a key area. Um, yeah. The whole thing with digital, I've learned a huge amount there. That a lot of people were surviving on, say, a smartphone that they didn't really use. Mm. They can text, they can call, they can't use Zoom on it because they don't know how to do that. What? How, and it's such a tiny screen that even if they could, that they can't really. So that's definitely been a big, or people who've had um, a partner who's maybe passed away, they were online, they did all the computing, but now the other one's left on their own and they haven't got a clue really right. about doing that um, and becoming more isolated because of that. Okay, that's, well. that's really interesting. I, I personally have found that I'm fitter, healthier, leaner, um, yeah. spending much more quality time with, with my family than I ever would have done because I, I normally drive 35,000 miles a year. So has, have you seen anything around that nutrition and that sort of energy in side of the equation change? Yeah, I think so, definitely. I mean, first of all, I agree with what you said about the travelling because obviously that, that completely stopped mm. in what we were doing. And yeah, from the things I was posting online with people and the feedback I was getting as well, people were definitely much more interested in um, how can I cook good meals now on the, the food I'm getting because I'm only kind of surviving on X, Y, and Z because I haven't got the money anymore or... Yeah. Um, we get the delivery now, but most of the stuff I wanted isn't in this pack. Mm. So it was being more savvy around giving people good recipes, easily easily achieved, that gives them good nutrition mm. and they feel better about it. And also we would talk about um, simple little things they could do at home, particularly thinking of the Sporting Memories group that was linked you know, to their love of sport or football. Yeah. They could do exercises going up and down the stairs or with the exercise bands, um, which people were quite, you know, they, were, they seemed to be a little bit more interested in that because right. I think they realised they weren't doing anything or going anywhere. Yeah. So it was more important mm. to do something. Otherwise, you know, the muscles will start to waste away. Absolutely. Okay, you've got one minute left, Marco. What's the one tip you could give us all around surviving lockdown three, but thriving outside of lockdown? Okay, so surviving lockdown three. Um, first tip I think I would give is don't think you're alone and you're the only one who's going through what you're going, mm. because most people are. Yeah, so yeah. first of all, I think it's maybe just reach, I'd encourage people to reach out, whether that's on the, the landline, the mobile phone, whichever way they want, because they'll normally find people are pretty pleased mm. to hear and, and try and build those relationships. Don't sit on problems and mm. think nobody's interested, whether that means your GP or your neighbor, talk to people, um, mm. talk about how you're feeling, talk about the problems you might be facing, because I think that is one of the, the big key areas I've noticed with people. Mm. I mean, I phone a, an, an elderly chap up every week, and the one thing he always he always finishes the conversation for me. He sort of goes, "Right, I think that's it then." But he <laughs> always says, "Ring me again next week, won't you?" Right. Mm. Always says that, and I say, "Of course, I will." So I think that's that brilliant. some of the major tips, and just sort of look out after yourself, be kind to yourself, mm. try and eat well, and try and do some type of exercise, whether that's a bit of a walk around your block, mm. or just to it makes you feel better. It makes yeah. you just feel that bit better. Absolutely. So that and, that, and that's a really good note to finish on because I'm now off for a walking meeting around my local park with somebody. So that's really good timing. Marco, thank you so much for your time. That's been really, really useful. And in the content of the post, people will be able to connect with you. Um, so we'll, we'll share that uh, very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.